What's up guys, DRock1992 here. For this next video, I'm going to continue on with my Quentin Tarantino movie marathon by talking about the fifth film that Tarantino directed. It came out in 2007, and it is called Death Proof. Uh, for those of you who know about Tarantino films, maybe not the biggest Tarantino fans, this film is kind of under the radar. And, um, I mean, this, yeah, this movie's kind of under the radar, and, um, you know, for good, I mean, there's a reason for it. I mean, a lot of the big films that Tarantino's made overshadow this film. Uh, but, anyway, Death Proof is an action exploitation horror film. It is an homage to exploitation films of the 1970s. Um, they were big in the in the 1970s and out, and all that black exploitation movies. Uh, actually, they're they're called black exploitation movies. That's what they're called. And talks about um, and apparently muscle cars were big in the 70s. This movie has a lot to do with a muscle car, in particular. So anyway, uh, the film basically it's a simple plot. It's about this stunt man who's a bit crazy in the head and he stalks a lot he stalks young women and young sexy women in his uh death his car that he calls death proof it's a stunt car and he stages car accidents he he murders these people uh he murders these women um in staged car accidents so that is essentially your plot of the movie. And um, stuff happens later on, but I'm not going to uh, spoil it for you. Um, <clears throat> very, very simple plot. Probably one of the most simple plots that I have ever given out on this channel for a movie. And uh, so without further ado, we can get into the characters. Um, the guy who plays the stuntman is Kurt Russell. Kurt Russell's been known for a lot of different things. Um, just I'll name a list off. Executive Decision. Um, I think it's a really good 90s movie. I really enjoy that film. Uh, he was recently in Furious 7. Um, I talked about him in my Furious 7 video. He was, a big, he was a major part of that. Not a major part of that movie, but he was good in the role he was in. Um... He's been in some movies, Big Trouble in Little China, Escape from New York, Escape from L.A., 3,000 Miles to Graceland, uh, I think that's what it's called, and um, so, yeah, he's definitely been in a lot of different films. Uh, he's had a long career. Uh, also starring in the film as one of the girls is Rosario Dawson who is a known actress. She's been in uh, movies like Sin City and Men in Black 2. Um, so you have Rose McGowan, who's in the movie, uh, Jordan Ladd, uh, Vanessa Ferlito, um, and some other people as well. A stunt woman named Zoe Bell, and uh, it's pretty much your main people, Sidney Poitier. Uh, and, uh, so yeah, basically, um, so let's get into the performances first, and, um, the performances were good, were pretty good in this movie. Kurt Russell does a nice job as stuntman Mike McKay, uh, and I like the movie up until the, I like his performance up until the end. I was turned off by the way his character went. Uh, at the end of the movie. Um, Zoe Bell uh, was one of the girls. Uh, there's a pair of six girls, essentially. Uh, Zoe Bell, you know, she... Uh, well, there's pretty much... There's like seven or eight different girls, but six that are involved in the major... Seven. Seven is... Seven that are involved... Um, with Kurt Russell's character in, you know, in, um, 
the whole movie, essentially, um, the big moments of the film. Uh, so Zoe Bell uh, does a good job. Rosario Dawson does a nice job in this movie. Um, you know, I liked her performance in Men in Black 2. Um, and this performance here is very, it's solid. It's a nice performance. Uh, <clears throat> Vanessa Ferlito is one that stands out to me. I never heard of her before. And I thought actually that she was, um, I actually thought when I saw her, her character and all that, I thought that she was, um, I thought that she was Rosario Dawson. But I was mistaken. She looked a little bit like her to me, but um, turns out I was wrong. But yeah, um, she does a nice job in the film. She's a standout for me. Um, pretty much the big standouts. Jordan Ladd plays uh, one of the other, one of the other girls as well. Um, Rose McGowan does a pretty uh, good job for her character and all that. Quentin Tarantino makes an appearance in this film as uh, it makes a small appearance um, this is pretty much Tarantino's thing he um, does a lot of different um, he stars in his movies uh, he starred in Pulp Fiction in a small role Pulp, yeah he, he was in Pulp Fiction in a small role Reservoir Dogs he voiced somebody in Jackie Brown I believe the Kill Bill movies I don't know if he was in those but anyway Tarantino does a lot of cameos and stuff like that in his different films. This one wasn't a cameo, but it was, um, he was definitely in it. So anyway, the characters were fine and all that. It's just the story for me. Um, I'll say right now, I was underwhelmed by Death Proof. Uh, it involved the story of three of the girls at first so like so anyway the story for me Tarantino's known for a lot of dialogue a lot of dialogue driven uh, moments in his movies and all that a lot of his movies a large percentage of his movies are dialogue driven the dialogue though for me has gone somewhere it's the dialogue from uh, different characters and all that for his movies have kind of combined together to form, to make sense of the plot and all that sort of thing. He has some very unconventional, nonlinear storytelling, but these parts, these dialogues between the different characters have come together to be very intriguing. In this movie, Death Proof doesn't do that. It just, it doesn't make sense, really. Some of the stuff, some of the dialogue that they say in this movie that they come up with is just not, it's just, it just doesn't go anywhere. I mean, it was okay to hear some of the stuff and all that, but some of the stuff that these characters were talking about, but they didn't go anywhere. They didn't tie into something else at the end of the movie, you know. The stuff they were talking about didn't come up at the end of the film and, and whatnot or into the film uh, further. So it's like they just didn't make sense, and I think it was wasted opportunity. You could have had some good stories with some of the stuff that they were talking about later on in the film, and it just didn't happen for me. So... I was bummed out about that, for sure. Um, like I said, Kurt Russell's character, I, l I, I liked pretty much up until the end of the movie. I think his character was uh, took a wrong turn, basically, and it just wasn't that good um, about his character and all that. But those are two of my big complaints. Um, some of the stuff, too, is like... Some of the dialogue, too, is it's just not as interesting as other, other Tarantino movies where dialogue's been very, has been interesting and all that. In particular, I go back to Pulp Fiction and um, 
you know, John Travolta and Sam Jackson are talking about Mc, uh, McDonald's uh, and uh, the French word for Big Mac or, or whatever. That stuff's interesting to me. I mean, in the, it might not seem interesting, but it's like everyday situations. They're talking about, like, just normal stuff that people, I guess, talk about. Um, so... What I'm what I'm trying to say is the dialogue is just more interesting in later Taran in the earlier Tarantino movies than they were in this movie. It just and another big complaint I had: not a lot of violence. I'll admittedly say I like Tarantino movies because of the violence. I like the blood and gore and stuff like that. That's my kind of thing. Pulp Fiction, er, Pulp Fiction had a lot of, had some of that. Reservoir Dogs probably had, well, Reservoir Dogs and Kill Bill had a lot of blood and gore. Pulp Fiction um, had a good amount. Jackie Brown, not so much, but when it was there, it was good. This movie just didn't have it. I mean, you had long periods of dialogue, which, I mean... Long periods of dialogue in Pulp Fiction, uh, Reservoir Dogs, Jackie Brown, and Kill Bill, I mean, they were fine because violence was also interplayed with the dialogue as well in those movies. So it was like, it was a nice balance. With Death Proof, you don't get that. There's only a couple significant... Um, there's only a couple significant scenes I can think of where there was violence. I will say, though, there's a car chase at the end of the movie that's good. I, I do like that quite a bit. But, just, um, I don't hate the movie. I don't hate this movie at all. I think it's, um, I think it's okay. But it definitely is lower, is one of the low points of Tarantino's, uh, movie so far for me so after going back and forth with the review of this film in particular I'm gonna give it a two and a half stars out of five um again I think it's a wasted opportunity I, th I think you could have made a very very good movie out of this but it was a wasted opportunity for me like I said not enough violence Kurt Russell's characters Nothing at the end, basically. Uh, you know, lot, a lot of dialogue. A lot of, like, when are we going to get to the violence, basically, is what I thought. And, um, you know, those were the, my big complaints. However, there were good performances. Kurt Russell, the performances were fine. Kurt Russell, in particular, gave a great performance as um, Stuntman Mike in this movie. Definitely gave a good performance, but just... All that other stuff I mentioned just overshadow what could have been a very good movie from Tarantino. But, hey, I gave Pulp Fiction, uh, Reservoir Dogs, Pulp Fiction, Jackie Brown, and Kill Bill, I gave all those a 5 out of 5 stars. So, I mean, every director has a misstep um, in his or her career, a couple missteps. Quentin Tarantino just had the one with, um, for me with Death Proof, which could have been a big movie, but just wasn't. So again, two and a half out of five stars for me for Death Proof. So that's it for this review on this dip movie, Death Proof. Uh, D Rock 1992 out.